timing is really important. So with feedback, you want to make sure certainly that, you know, you want to make sure it's done privately. I literally cringe when I hear around, you know, feedback is given in like a team environment. I mean, if it's team based, it's different, but, you know, certainly for a personal, you know, personal performance, you want to make sure that it's done privately. You want to really pay attention to the time of the day, make sure that you actually have time to talk things out. So even if you just want to make sure that if this is going to open up more conversation, that you're calm, they're calm. So even the emotional state is actually really important. And then understand who you're giving the feedback to because different generations are going to want it a little different. Traditionals a lot of times like more the performance review. Like they like something a little bit more custom, more traditional. Millennials like more informal. They like it more like you're going out for lunch or you're kind of like going for a cup of coffee. Like it's much more informal. It's more relationship, kind of a mentoring kind of feel. I'm a big advocate and I get mixed, I get mixed feedback on this. I'm a big advocate. Let people know what they're doing well first. And this isn't coddling and this isn't babysitting and this isn't, this is just positive reinforcement. Like before you tell a person what they need to work on, let them know with what they're doing well. And what you're doing is you're actually reinforcing, like, keep doing this. This part is awesome. I love this. This part we got to work on. This part, you know, is, and so, and then being very specific on what the what it is that the person actually needs to do so often like people are like so afraid to give it they're super vague and but people need very specific direction and especially millennials you know for everybody listening you know millennials get this terrible reputation that they're difficult to manage i think i love millennials I, they're my like one of my favorite age groups to work with because we give them lots of praise give them very directive specific guidance and they will be so loyal to you they are fiercely loyal to really great managers, but you do need to be very directive and say specifically what they need to be doing well and and really set them up kind of for success. And so, but it does depend on who your audience is because I've done lots of management training and I'll have boomers saying, I don't want any of the positive reinforcement crap. That I don't I don't need that. That that I feel like that's almost a setup. Um, I just give me like more direct. So you do have to get to know, you have to know who is your audience and what is the best way that they're actually going to receive it. That's every boomer I know. <laughs> Johnny included. I can speak yeah, from experience. Yeah. Yeah. No, honestly, boomers are like, Karen, please do not tell me that positive reinforcement. I can't stand I'm like, but that that's a that's that's your experience. Realize that other people are different. And if the end goal here is for us to really motivate and inspire change, positive change, you've got to understand your team members and what it is that they need it, you know, how, what, is, what needs to happen so that they're best likely to actually listen and to actually pay attention to it. I think a big part in our experience, especially with managing millennials is letting them know ahead of time, I would love to give you some feedback and not just scheduling a random meeting at a random time out of the blue and dumping on them because there is a mental preparation and some people are going to want it immediately. Some people are going to say, okay, can we do it in the afternoon? Can we do it tomorrow? When I get through this other thing, there is an emotional regulation piece to that feedback and we all receive it somewhat differently. And that's where the art form comes in, but just scheduling a meeting and out of the blue, jumping right into feedback with no context, the other person's not prepared for it, uh, will oftentimes lead to that emotional outburst that we're not really looking for as leaders, is not impactful in terms of the behavior change, the goals that we're trying to reach. And the other piece in our feedback that, that I've noticed is, is understanding how this piece fits into the bigger whole, right? Oftentimes, when we receive feedback, it can feel like you're on an island and you're being singled out and you're the only one doing something wrong. And as a leader, it's also on you. It's to say, hey, it was my responsibility. I understand that I didn't clarify this in the email that I sent you. I understand that I wasn't specific in the exact time that I needed this. So for future reference, this is what happens. And when this happens, this is how the entire goal, group, whatever suffers, gets off track. That level of context and you taking responsibility as a leader for the miscommunication, whatever the case may be that led to them maybe feeling like they didn't need to deliver it on time or maybe feeling like it was a little bit looser and more free instead of something they should prioritize goes a long way to them trusting you as a leader upon receiving that feedback. 